Goethe speculated around how to summarize his experiences. Color is an elementary phenomenon in nature adapted to the sense of vision, a phenomenon that, like all others, exhibits itself by separation and contrast, by commixture and union, by augmentation and neutralization, by communication and dissolution. Next to the light, a color appears which we call yellow. Another appears next to the darkness, which we name blue. When these, in their purest state, are so mixed that they are exactly equal, they produce the third color, called green. Each of the two first-named colors can, however, of itself produce a new tint by being condensed and darkened. They thus acquire a reddish appearance, which can be increased to so great a degree that the original blue, or yellow, is hardly to be recognized in it. But the intensest and purest red is produced when the two extremes of the yellow red and blue red are united. With these three or six colors, which may be conveniently included in a circle, the elementary doctrine of colors is alone concerned. This is a schematic illustration. Observe that complementary colors are placed diametrically opposed to each other to symbolize their particular relationship. Here is another way of illustrating how the color qualities are related to each other. We may call it a dynamic color circle. The point is that color appearance is continuously varying according to conditions, so that you cannot fix a color to a given place in a scheme. This indeterminacy belongs to its life, so to speak. Color is, by its very nature, changing, fluctuating, difficult to grasp and domesticate. Finally, we come to the chapter which Goethe called Sinnlich Sittliche Wirkung der Farbe, where emotional and aesthetic effects of color are treated, as well as color conventions and the use of color in art. Experience teaches us that particular colors excite particular states of feeling. In order to experience these influences completely, the eye should be entirely surrounded with one color, we should be in a room of one color, or look through a colored glass. We are then identified with the you. It attunes the eye and mind in mere unison with itself. So let us take a look through a yellow glass. Yellow gives a warm and pleasant impression. This may be experienced in a very lively manner if we look at a landscape through a yellow glass. The eye is gladdened, the heart expanded, and the mind cheered. A glow seems at once to breathe towards us. And a blue glass? As yellow is always accompanied with light, so it may be said that blue brings a principle of darkness with it. The appearance of objects seen through a blue glass is gloomy and melancholy. And finally, a purple glass. Purple glass reveals a well-lit landscape in an awe-inspiring light. This is the hue that should extend across the earth and sky on the Day of Judgment. From these three, light, shade and color, we construct the visible world and thus at the same time make painting possible, an art which has the power of producing on a flat surface a much more perfect visible world than the actual one can be. Perverse color combinations, they could be experienced as harmonic or characteristic. 
We call these combinations characteristic because they have all a certain significance and tend to excite a definite impression. An impression, however, which doesn't altogether satisfy inasmuch as every characteristic quality of necessity presents itself only as part of a whole, with which it has a relation, but into which it cannot be resolved. The characteristic in color may be comprehended under three leading rubrics, which we here define as the powerful, the soft and the splendid. It would not be unreasonable to compare a painting with a powerful effect with a piece of music in a sharp key, and a painting with a soft effect with a piece of music in a flat key. In his old days, Goethe had a young secretary, Johann Peter Eckermann, who put down notes from their conversations, which were later on published. They are a veritable treasure of wise utterings from the old Goethe, looking back on his long life and extensive work. I give you a last word from this conversation with Eckermann on the 18th of February 1829, concerning the importance of letting the phenomena of color speak for themselves. The highest, said Goethe, which man can attain in these matters, is astonishment. If the primary phenomena bring him this, let him be satisfied and forbear to seek above or behind, for here is the limit. But men will not stop here. They are like children who, after peeping into the mirror, turn it round to see what is on the other side.